everybody. <laughs> Before I graduated at Design Academy Eindhoven, I walked a very long and curvaceous path of all different kinds of studies. Starting off with psychology, I was curious about the psyche of the human. I quickly switched and turned to fashion, which to me is the border between the self and its context. Thirdly, I studied fine art, which is the, ex the cultural landscape of all different kinds of expressions. I made a very weird turn and studied tourism, which is to me actually uh, the global connection and relationship between all different kinds of cultures. And all these studies uh, became the blueprint for all of my designs. In my design work, I investigate how the self could influence its context, or how a context could influence the self. And all these layers in between. Where does the self start? Where does it end? Where does your context start? And where does it end? How do we define these borders? Movement is always a very important part of my work because that's where the two meet in the middle and kind of like collide. All of a sudden, these borders be start to blur and there's this whole new blank space that could be filled in with ideas and experiments. As you abstract this vision, you can see that the context forms brackets around the self, which means still needs to be defined or needs to be redefined. How does this all translate into design? That's a very good question. Uh, therefore, I want to introduce you to my work uh, called Bodybuildings. I was inspired uh, by the big city of London when I moved there uh, for my internship with a photography and film studio. And I quickly experienced how much impact a context could actually have on the self. How people move in a big city like London is completely different from how people move in a city like Eindhoven, for instance. Since there is a scarcity of personal space, people tend to turn to themselves and isolate, them, isolate each other from what's happening around them. I want to uh, show you a little video uh, that I made uh, around this work, Bodybuildings. So you can see how uh, these garments adopt the language of the city and show you how you can expand the borders between the self and its context to uh, filter the stimuli surrounding you. So uh, for this project, I literally adopted all these hard structures and grids from the city and translate them into soft textiles using uh, soft and silky and puffy materials to provide comfort for the body and literally create a soft shell that filters the stimuli around you. I used monochromatic colors to merge all these elements together into one bodybuilding. I also want to tell you a little bit how I made the movie because that was actually really cool to do. Uh, instead of literally taking my bodybuildings and putting them back into their context of the big city in London, I thought it would be cooler to create my own landscape by 3D scanning these soft structures, they became hard again. And so I created this digital landscape in which they could wander freely. So after this project, uh, I moved continents and I flew to America, where I live right now. And I also uh, flipped perspective. And instead of investigating how a context could influence the self, I started to be curious how a person could influence its context. And that's how Drono Mode occurred. Uh, I met this amazing uh, interdisciplinary artist called Benglass, uh, who is mostly focused on sound design. What does Ben do? Uh, he creates sound drones, 
What are sound drones? Um, for instance, an ambulance is a sound drone. As an ambulance moves through space, you perceive the sound differently as it's very far or close by. And to experience this, I want to invite you all to close your eyes and listen to a composition by Ben Glass, which is a sound drone. So please all close your eyes. and start moving your head from left to right and up and down, slowly or quickly, get in there. All right, that was very beautiful to watch. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Yes, so as you could experience, the sound changes slightly as movement plays part. And this uh, we wanted to enhance. And so we started to work with dancers. So if dancers would be, f would be in a room filled with this sound drone, they would literally start moving in between these waves and manipulate the sound in space. How could we enhance this uh, sense of perception? Maybe by using materials that reflect and absorb sound, like foam and glass. I was very inspired by the transportation industry because the bodies were literally transporting themselves through space. Um, at the time, I was doing a lot of patterning and also a lot of garment constructions. So I was inspired how to use these techniques of basic pat patterning and garment constructions in different ways. And so the material actually decides the shape of the sound suits that I made. As you can see here, uh, the plexiglass sound suit has a very rigid shape which then also uh, defines how this dancer moves through space. The sound suit that is made out of foam is very flexible, and this one absorbs the sound uh, as this dancer moves through space. And to end this presentation, I want to show you a little clip about, uh, to show you how that will look like. I want to thank you all for taking a peek into this digital window that sheds upon my world. But I also want to invite you to co continue this conversation on how we can keep experimenting and filling in the blank spaces between the self and its context. So please come find me after the conversation, after this presentation, and we'll have a chat. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>